Hey guys, Jermaine Morgan here, and you're watching Grooves and Motivation Live. Listen, we're going to be talking about something. We're going to be talking about something good today. <laughs> uh, don't cheat the process. I don't want to give it away too early, but we're going to groove a little bit. You know what we do. We're going to groove a little bit, and we're going to jump right into this, so stay tuned. <laughs> All right, let's jump right into this thing this morning. So uh, again, as usual, wherever you're watching from, please be sure to drop that in the comments. I uh, love to see that. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much for joining it with me. This is the second week of the new year, 2023. I hope you guys are all off to a great start. I really, really hope that you're off to a great start. Charles, what's up, man? Charles Hardy in the building. Philly is in the building this morning. So we, get, we got some Philly. We got some groove for you now. Uh, Charles, so we're we gonna bring that uh, we're gonna bring that Philly groove. Well, I ain't gonna call it Philly groove, we're just gonna bring that feel good. We'll say that we bring that feel good this morning. So, uh, BE, what's up, man? Roy City, Texas, good stuff. Thank you for joining in with me, man. My regulars are jumping in early. That's what's up. So, good stuff. Look, I'm gonna jump right into this groove this morning, and, and y'all just you keep dropping a comment. But before I do that, I need to copy something so I don't be trying to do this later. I want to get this out of the way because I know me, I'll be searching for this later. And uh, while I'm looking for this, I'm gonna put this drum groove in just to get y'all going, get your head bobbing. Listen to that snare smacking. <laughs> That's my boy Kobe Strauder playing that uh, groove here. The loop this morning is brought to you by Kobe Strauder on drums. I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that groove marinate for a little while. I'm a sound check, people. Y'all hear everything all right? Give me some thumbs up if you're hearing that groove real good. I hate to you not to hear these drums while I'm playing, and I'm thinking I'm jamming over here, and y'all can't hear the, hear the groove. Appreciate that, Charles. I need at least one like before I keep going. Y'all gotta help this video out. <laughs> if that groove is feeling good so far, just go ahead and drop that one thumbs up and then two and then three. You know what to do. Help this video go and get found a little bit more. We're just gonna give y'all the one right now. I know you're driving, but just hit that thumb real quick. There it is. There it is. All right, I guess we'll continue. Welcome, Diane.
All right, I'm seeing the thumbs. I appreciate that. Ever, Tobar, Avery, have you ever played a praise break? Uh, ever played a praise break? Absolutely. I got a whole course while well, I'm showing people how to play praise break. So absolutely. Um, Diane says, I'm loving the title too. It's just what I need at this time too. Cool. We're going to get into that a little later. Uh, Chris, good morning to you. Chris is in the building from Colorado. I don't think I've seen anybody from Colorado on here before. Maybe I have and I just didn't, didn't realize it. But welcome, Chris. Sam, Jacksonville in the building. All good, Chris. Just jump on the bakes later. Y'all can hear those horns in the background. You got to use your imagination. Rubio, good morning. The Philippines is in the building. Andre, Andre, uh, is just finally caught up with you. That bass sounds really good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Douglas says, I'm probably, I know I'm probably a little late, but good morning, bro. <laughs> Go Hawks. The Seattle Seahawks is in the building. You're right on time, man. As long as you come in on the one. Mm -hmm. 
Chris said you put me on to sweet water. I'm trying to get that same fluidity that you have. I'm going to talk about that today. I am definitely going to deal with that uh, today as we talk about uh, not cheating the process. So yeah, we're going to get into all of that today. says do you have any tips that can help me with getting better at playing bass licks oh, absolutely <laughs> stay tuned in all honesty uh sam i've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about a lot of different bass licks and showing uh, different types of bass licks and all that type of thing so just search this channel do a binge of all of my <laughs> videos because there are tons of things covering bass licks on this channel so be sure to sh uh, search that after this video that's right diane Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. 
Let that groove settle and you just hear the rest of it for yourself. I think that's enough of that. I think that's enough of that. All right, guys. Let's see here. I missed a few of y'all. Um, let me go back. Let me go back. I, I'm trying to think. Uh, what, who did I stop with? All right. So I'll just start here. I'll just start here. Um, Chris Washington says, what key do you tune your bases? Do you have a conventional or do you? Uh, drop to him. Well, do you stay conventional? Or do you drop to him with this particular bass uh, right now? My preference is tuning um, half a step lower. This bass is not tuned to E, uh, to an E flat. You know, I, I um, prefer playing like half a step lower, especially with this four string that you're not able to really 
get way down in low end and I play a lot of gospel. So yeah, this four string right now is tuned flat when I teach. However, I tune standard. Um, so I, I do tune standard for teaching purposes. And so, yeah, um, those are my two tunings. So uh, Andre says, go get the DVD box set. It will show you everything. Uh, yes, sir. I guess you're talking about one of the um, uh, courses that I have. Anthony, good morning to you, sir. He says, good morning, Jermaine. That signature bass sounds great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, this is the J. Morgan uh, JM Signature Jazz uh, four string. This bass is passive, by the way. And yes, we do have the five string version of this bass. It's still on back order, but we will we will get those over soon. You'll see me playing them here on the uh, channel soon. The five string, because I know a lot of people have been asking me about the five string version of this bass. Like, man, do you got it in five? Yes, yes, we have it in five. So give me a little time, and we'll you'll see these. Um, as well on the site so anyway um chris washington says nice group man thank you chris i appreciate it appreciate that uh chris rubio says been enjoying your bass lesson sir thank you for watching i appreciate it diane says i was just about to practice the pentatonic scale when i saw your live i start another band at the end of the month i've never played gospel raised with gospel music but never played wow that's crazy cool cool stuff well don't let me hold up your practice but soon as this is over <laughs> pick your bass up all right so who else we have here uh she says so this message is timely sweet uh i don't know if i'm gonna say this right well i'm gonna try i'm, I'm gonna say d that's the way I, I save everything yep just a big 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 uh op from reunion island if i'm saying that correct indian ocean I'm a big fan, man. Thanks for all the total res Thanks for all total respect. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Ryad Critchlow. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Good morning to you. Uh, Willie. Willie Finley says, man, sounds great. But how how play and keep that groove? How do how do I play and keep the groove? You mean like the little in between stuff? Hopefully that's I think that's what you mean. Um, like making sure the, the main thing stay the main thing that's that's the best i can say with that just making sure you always keep the main thing the main thing coming back to that one with that type of groove you know if this is my foundation everything else is around that so whatever else i'm gonna do i gotta fit it in and get right back to that that's my foundation so i i make sure i keep like I said, keep the main thing the main thing. So make sure you remember what your foundation is and try to kind of time out the stuff that you're going to do. You, you kind of got to be somewhat thinking ahead and already be familiar with your vocabulary. That's another thing I'll add. And doing stuff like that, you got to know what you can do and what you can pull off. And if you haven't really executed it in your own practice time, it might be a little more difficult to just know that something is going to work if you hadn't already executed it before. You can every now and again kind of happen up on it and do it uh, by accident. But if you want to be able to repeat it over and over again, it has to be something that you've already worked out in your own practice time and, and keeping that foundation the main thing and then making sure whatever you're doing gets back to uh, that groove, that foundation. All right. So this is four string heavy to slap. Uh, hello. First time catching you live. There's a lot of first time livers this morning. So do me a favor. Turn on my uh, notifications if you haven't already done that. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that. Um, I play sometimes with this old school church. We have piano, guitar, and I've, I'd have i like to play with them on bass. What do you recommend for playing traditional hymns without a drummer? You're definitely going to have to be rhythmic uh, in your plan. Um, so, I mean, first and foremost, learning the music. Uh, living with that style of music, if this is something that is new to you and you haven't really spent a lot of time playing that music, getting the feel of the music by listening to that music and living with that music is everything because that's going to give you the rhythmic uh, interpretation that you need. So like me playing this, I should be able to, uh, I think I was in a lesson with somebody the other day and I was telling them, you should be able as a bass player to suggest what the drummer's groove is based on your feel of how you play. So you should be able to suggest to the drummer, so if I play. 
Uh, what was I playing? That's it. So if a drummer just sat down on the drums, based on the rhythm that I'm playing, he should know. If I'm playing it like this, that might give him a little something, but there's not a lot of information in terms of the feel of it. There we go, that's more stripped down. Now here's the thing. I wanna make sure I make clarity with this because even in my lessons, like when I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching, sometimes it can be misinterpreted what I'm actually saying here. So to break down the two differences in what I'm trying to convey, uh, when I'm saying like the drummer should be able to tell what to play based on your groove and how you plan it. Now there are studio, here's the difference. There are studio situations and scenarios where the producer does not want all of that extra grooving stuff so you got to make sure you know how to do it both ways maybe in a live session you can get away with a lot of the ghost notes and all that extra stuff but sometimes you'll get in studio situations where you got to dial it back so maybe in a studio session where they have drums and percussion and program drums and loops and all that kind of stuff you can get away with doing this and that's plenty enough But however, live, if you're playing with somebody and maybe the bass player got to kick it off, then you might need to have a little bit more rhythm, uh, rhythmic control up under your hands. You know what I'm saying? So you got that rhythmic control on your hands. And so we can clearly identify what the feel of that song is based on how you're playing. So understanding the difference between the two, like in some scenarios, less is more. And then other scenarios, more is more, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I want to make sure that I'm distinguishing because I know with some people that can become a debate, well, you're doing too much and you're hitting the strings and all that kind of stuff. You got to make sure uh, you know what fits for that situation. And that really comes with doing it over and over again and getting outside of your four walls and playing to know the difference because if you just sit in a practice room you're not going to really get a good feel for what actually works sometimes you'll know in a smaller band and this goes for any of you guys that might be uh, playing in a smaller band where it might just be you drums and a piano or you drums and a keyboard you drums and something simple uh a simple setup a lot of times understanding like your rhythmic stuff can make up the difference in what's missing in the groove you don't have to like play a whole bunch of riffs and licks and all that kind of stuff. But the rhythmic stuff that you do with your right hand can actually make up a lot of the difference to where it feels more full. And it's like where the rhythm uh, guitar would, you know, have a rhythm guitar doing that normally and you don't have that rhythm to fill up that space. Well, So it's like you, you, you're given the hint of that sound. You're not necessarily able to play the guitar part or you shouldn't be trying to play the guitar part, but you're given that uh, feel for what should be there, that other rhythmic uh, thing that should be there. I'm turning this into a bass lesson. I know y'all like, cool. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to make sure I thoroughly um, answered that question. All right, so let's see here. Let's see here. Who else I miss? Um, only now starting to connect now. Uh, Maine. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um, I see what you're saying. I think I see what you're saying. So the black Chad says, I'm late to the stream. Did I miss the groove? Absolutely, Chad. I grooved for like 30 minutes straight. <laughs> so you missed it. You missed the groove. Used to watch you when I started bass, but never took you seriously. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully you take me seriously now uh, or not, you know. <laughs> um, I hope you are good and well, Jay. All is well, man. Thanks, Black Chad, for checking in. I'm going to just call you Chad. Thanks for uh, checking in.
and uh, hanging out with me today. So, all right, let's jump into this talk. I don't want to be on here uh, for two hours. <laughs> that kills me in the algorithm. All right, uh, will there be a five-string version of your bass? Absolutely. Uh, Azium 808, okay. Uh, yeah, that, that will be a five-string version of this bass. All right, so, so don't cheat the process. What am I talking about? All right, so in a nutshell, y'all know I'm the story dude. I've done lessons, man, for a long time. I've done lessons for a long time. I think I started teaching around the age of 16, somewhere in there. I started teaching like music in general, like lessons, giving private lessons. I would teach people. They would come to my parents' house. I would teach. Um, I, I would teach guitar. I would teach bass. I would teach keyboard. The only thing I didn't teach at the time was drums because I didn't have a drum kit. Uh, but I taught all those instruments way back in the day. And one of the things I noticed that was a common thing from way back then all the way up to now is oftentimes there is a um, there is this idea of I want to get there and I want to be able to do what you do. And I want to be able to do it like in three to four lessons or I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to do it overnight. <laughs> this idea that. Uh, I can get to where you got to based on you showing me stuff. And, or if I'm paying you to teach me lessons, then I should be getting there like super quick, which to not contradict myself with a coach, with a teacher. Yes, that should help to speed up the time and shave off some of the, the, the things that you would have to do if you were doing it on your own. Yes, having a teacher, having somebody to show this stuff to you will definitely uh, shave off some of the time that it would take you by yourself to try to do this stuff, try to do it all by yourself. So absolutely, I agree with that. But here's what I'm talking about. Most of the people, uh, I ain't going to say most, a lot of the people that I've come in contact with over the years want to cheat the process. And here's what I mean. I'll go in in-depth uh, to, to explain what I mean here. A lot of people want to cheat the process. You hear one of your favorite players or you see somebody online or somebody that's doing something and you automatically, if they teach you on a lesson or something, just say me, for instance, I do these YouTube lessons and I have people that come into my lessons. And it's like uh, you'll get comments from time to time, uh, suggestions rather from things that you should do to make it easier for the person who's actually learning the material. Some of that stuff I do take heed to because, again, I don't know everything. Um, I, I take heed to it to see what would be the you know, make the experience a lot better for the person who's watching. I do want to make the experience better. So please don't misread what I'm saying. When I hear these things, a lot of these things I do take heed to, but some of this stuff I don't. I'm going to just be point blank honest with you. It's like, I got no interest in doing that. Like, man, you should do this and you should do that for us beginners or whatever. And it's like, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, you're trying to cheat the process. You're trying to cheat the process. And, and here's why I say that. Because first and foremost, a lot of people, especially from my generation and on down, you know, like people who are older than me, we didn't have access to YouTube. And it was very difficult to come across lessons and all these different things or f from your favorite players or some players you admire and that type of thing. You do good to even find an instructional on anybody. Like the only the top, top cats had instructionals that showed you and actually broke down what they were doing. And they weren't constantly putting out instructionals. You did good. To, I remember Spanky uh, Alfred, uh, rest his soul, he did a uh, Spanky's Playhouse, a DVD instructional years ago, and I ain't even own it. <laughs> a good friend of mine, James Judon, he had the DVD. And, man, when I would go over to his house, I would go through that thing. This was before they put it on YouTube. I would go through that thing trying to figure out stuff that he was doing on guitar. And it was just like gold when you had the opportunity to get to what he was doing. And it's like he showed it to you. He broke it down. And that was it. It's like you was on your own to figure it out. It wasn't no coming back next week. Can you give me the tabs? And no, it wasn't none of that stuff. You listened to it and you, you figured out what he was doing based on what he showed you. And you went and did the homework. Or before even before he came out with the DVD, I was studying records as a guitar player of stuff that he had uh, played on and just stop, rewind, stop, rewind. And I would go back and listen to that stuff intently trying to figure out, like, what did he do? What was what was that? How did he how did he do that? And I remember the same thing when I, I started 
Uh, many of you might not have seen already the uh, the video I posted the other day uh, about um, three uh, what was it three tips for improving bass players or something like that. Just search my channel, one of my most recent videos. Anyway, I was talking about when I would learn Victor Wooten stuff when I first got introduced to Victor Wooten years ago. I didn't know anything about an instructional at all. Uh, again, that type of stuff back in the day wasn't as easily accessible. If you lived in a place um, where it was kind of rural and you didn't like, I lived in the country, so we didn't know anything about Victor Wooten. And so uh, if you live somewhere that you didn't know about that stuff, chances are your local music stores and all these different people didn't have anything or didn't have the DVDs and all that kind of stuff because they weren't hip. They didn't know about it. So you were left to the mom and pop stores to try to find this information. And if you didn't already know about this stuff, you couldn't find it. So you had to just figure it out when you listen to the records. And so I would listen to this stuff when I finally got hip to Victor and I would listen to this stuff and I would go back and play it and try to figure out, is that what he's doing? And then you meet somebody along the way. I mean, you'll find your way of playing it and then you meet somebody else down the road and they might have learned it a little different, a little better than you. And you like, OK, what is that you did? Because when I play it, it, ain't, it didn't sound like this. And like for me, like Nate Holloman would be one of those cats for me that I would listen to him play. And it sound like his stuff sound like the record. But my stuff don't sound, sound like the record. So how are you getting that? And so we would trade off ideas. It wasn't much idea trading. It was me asking question, questions and learning from him. And so I'm getting like what he got from it. And I was applying it. And so all this stuff, the reason why I'm giving you all this long story, because I'm showing you there was a process in understanding and figuring this stuff out. And part of the, the, the payoff from that process, each time you learn a little bit more and it inspired you to keep going, to keep trying, you listen to these records after hearing, like for me, after hearing of somebody like a Nate or some other player that I looked up to play something that I thought was difficult and I, they break it down and show me a little bit of what they got. Not all of it. They show me a little bit. Now, the next time when I go back and listen to the record, I hear it more clearly. It's like, oh man, I didn't hear that before. Oh, that's that's crazy. That's I didn't even know he was doing that. So the little by little, you start to pick up more and more. And what you're doing all the while is you're training your ear. You're training your ear. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with watching YouTube videos and learning. And, you know, obviously I do YouTube and I do video based lessons. But at the same time, you have to put in that time on your own. You have to put in the time on your own. If you're going to really get to where you're trying to get to as a player, it's necessary that you put in that time on your own. And you got to do the tedious work of going and stopping, rewinding and going back and playing it. <laughs> it's so funny. And no shade to the people who come in on some of my videos and ask me to break down certain things that I've done. But if I've done a lesson, just, you know, I'm going to be the bad guy right quick. If I've done a lesson, and I've showed you basically uh, all of the licks in a song. Uh, like recently, I've done a few lessons where I broke down. Like I think one of the most recent, one of the most recent lessons that I've done where I broke down an actual like licks in the hard parts of songs was like the Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Bless Me. I did like a video where I broke down like four to five bass licks in that song. And I still had people commenting on the video and i'm not mad i just want to make a, i'm using this to make an example so don't think i'm picking on you if you're one of the ones who come in it but i'm using this to make an example there are people commenting on the video saying hey can you do a breakdown of this entire song and i'm like um well not really because i don't want to become a crutch as much as i want to help you i don't want to become a crutch for you as a player because I've already broke down the hardest parts of the song. And, and, and hear me out. I know everybody's ears are not the same. And so hence me doing that video. Because I know that some of those lines and stuff like that could present themselves to be difficult for a lot of players if they're trying to learn this stuff by themselves. So that's why I got the hardest parts of the song out of the way. But if you're still finding it hard to just figure out the regular part of the song, then that's an indication to you that you need to do more ear training. We just call a spade a spade today. You, that, that means you just need to do more ear training. No, don't nobody need to, to do the tabs for you. You need to do more ear training. It's going to be difficult, but that's part of the process. 
That's part of the process. If you don't do the necessary ear training, then you're always going to be dependent on somebody else to do the work for you. And now when you get with this person, you get with that person. I signed up for this person's base lesson. And they didn't really help me. I signed up for that person's base lesson. And they didn't really help me. And I signed up for it's like it's kind of like signing up for a diet program. They all work. Some of them better than others, but they all work. You just have your preference of what works best for you. But they all work because each person is getting results. Every person is getting results to some degree. They all work. So it don't matter who you sign up for. You might not like their teaching style. Uh, <laughs> y'all know me. I'll put myself out front. I ain't going to sit here and tell y'all stuff. I got to do a commercial break because my camera is about to cut off. So, so, so bear with me. You know what it is. I got to do this commercial break. All right. So 10 Ways to Success is my book for you guys who don't know. I've created a book for you working uh, musicians. And don't let me lose my place in my story that I was telling you guys. I'm going to tell you my story about my learning and teachers and all this kind of stuff. But 10 Ways to Success is my book that you guys can grab if you don't already have it. And uh, it will show you 10 Ways to Success if you are a working musician by using things that you may not have already considered this is available on jermainmorgan.net if you want to sign copy um just simply go to jermainmorgan.net and go to my shop tab and also oh yeah before i get too far in and completely forget um uh, what i was saying um i want to make mention of this because I just forget all the time. So y'all bear with me. I remember what I'm going to be talking about. So I got it right now. So, so just remember statistics. Just somebody, if, if I forget and I say I can't remember, somebody just say statistics. All right. So these straps have, uh, all right. So somebody asked about how can we purchase the book? Let me do this. Let me do this. I'm glad you asked. Let me do this real quick. So I don't, um, I don't forget to purchase. Uh, I don't forget to, to do this. I'm going to put a link up here in the chat where you can go and purchase right now uh, if you want this book. And for you guys that already got the book, thank you so much. Um, but this is a link. This is not my website, but you can you can also follow this link. I just dropped in the chat and purchase the book there as well. So, yeah. Um, also, these straps. Again, I got I got to do this. This is this is how we keep the business going. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all bear with me. These straps have um, a custom, obviously custom uh, signature straps. And um, so is this bass, this JM starter uh, jazz bass that's available on the website as well. You'll see all that stuff on the website. But I wanted, the reason why I want to mention these straps, I have, this is actually a new design of the black and white that I'm currently wearing right now. I got two in stock. Normally the straps, are most of the custom stuff that I have, is never in stock you gotta order it and you gotta wait on it but i got two in stock right now that you can grab um, most of them are double-sided only this one is not double-sided it's still um you see i mean you can turn it around if you want it to but it don't have the logo on the other side when i say it's not double-sided it don't have the logo definitely double-sided but it don't have the logo so i have this one that's uh i think it's the brown predator uh that's available right now and I also have just, like I said, this black and white. And for my people who got those cool colored bases, this one, the double side of this one is actually pretty cool. It's a mint green and the brown. So this is, these two are in stock. I just wanted to make sure I mention that because I always forget. And uh, I have people order and the first thing, how long is it going to take to get here? Well, if you want one. I got these two in stock, and I can't guarantee how long they're going to be here. So simply go to JermaineMorgan.net. I think I um I called myself copying that link earlier, but let me put it back in the chat because I forgot to put it in the chat. And I'm sorry that I uh, forgot to do that, guys. Uh, and just for the sake of somebody asking that wants to know about this bass I was playing earlier, I'm going to put that link in the chat as well. And, um, yeah. So here it is right here in the chat as well, just for the people who are curious and you want to check it out or know more about it. All right. So back to what I was talking about. So the story that I was going to tell, I actually remembered the story this time. <laughs> so people's teaching styles are different, but they all work. I remember when I was in college, 
I took this statistics class. And man, when I tell you, <laughs> that class was rough on me. I had uh, other nationalities. How, how can I say this? The classroom, there were a handful of Americans in that class. And I was one of the maybe three Americans in that class. And the other students were from you know other places, mostly Asia. And so the teacher, for lack of better words, his job was pretty, pretty easy. The majority of the students in the class, he said very little, and they got it, and they did the work, and it was just, and I'm sitting there like, okay, I, I didn't get all that, but okay, I guess everybody else did, so cool. I, I'll never forget, I was taking this test one time, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm struggling in this class, and we're close to the end of the semester, maybe a few weeks or maybe a month or something left in the semester, but I know that it was, it was downhill for me it was really no survival from from this test and i never forget that teacher he said you know we had still been in there and like three people left in the room he said if you're still uh in here then you're probably just waiting on the answers to fall out of the sky at this point because you don't have it so I, at that point i just wrote my name on my paper and turned it in and uh went ahead and <laughs> went ahead and took my l for that class and i took it over the summer uh at another now here's the thing about the point that i'm making when i took it over the summer i took it with a, a different instructor who the way she taught it she made it make sense to me but in the setting it was more of a almost one-on-one -on -one. i had more one-on-one -on -one access to her and she took her time teaching it and it was a class full of people that were more like me that didn't get it as quickly and she took her time and the way she explained the information i understood it I understood it and I passed that class with like a B plus. And so I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> I think I went to Ole Miss to take that particular uh, statistics class. And so the information was the same, but just the way it was delivered made it a little bit easier for me to understand. But in both instances, I had to do the work. I just couldn't figure it out the first time around. The second time around, I was actually... Um, I was still doing the work, but the way she explained it to me made it a lot easier. But again, preference of teachers, they explain it different. But at the end of the day, if I didn't do the work, even after all of her explaining, it still would have been a fail. I still would have failed the second time I took it because you still got to do the work. Just because you're, you know, you got a good teacher, you still got to do the work. And that's the problem that I see with a lot of people. They get really, really good teachers and they won't do the work. They won't do the work. I've had students over the years who I would give them assignments or, or different things. Hey, based on what you got going on, here's what you need to work on. And, and week or month or however often that we would meet, it's like it'd be the same thing. They found something better to work on and they didn't work on the very thing that I told them that was going to improve what they were trying to work on or what they needed to improve. One of the things I heard about coaching in particular, um, this blew me away when I heard this. And I'm like, this is absolutely right. Being a you know a teacher, a coach myself. I heard this and it says, good coaching sounds like bad advice at first. Somebody write that down in your head and on your phone. Good coaching sounds like bad advice at first. If a person is really giving you good information that's going to help move you forward, it's going to sound like it's counterproductive when they tell you to do it. So when you hear it the first time, you're like, man, wait, I don't I don't need to work. I'm trying to figure out how you do this right here. And then somebody tell, well, you want to start slow and you want to work on X, Y and Z. Well, no, that, no, I'm trying to play fast. OK, yeah. So so go slow. But I'm trying to really I'm, I'm trying to be able to play fast just like you did. OK, well, go slow. And it sounds counterproductive because it's like, all right, get your metronome out and start playing as fast as you can. That's what you think you should probably do. And maybe somebody teaches that way. But in order to be able to, to execute the stuff that you're doing really, really fast, you got to be able to do it slow and execute it slow, right? Make sure that it's clean, slow. So I've shown um, different techniques with my teaching and all that type of stuff about using a metronome. I'm not going to go into that right now, 
um, but I've shown different techniques with using a metronome and, and gradually speeding up and, and building your speed and all those types of things. But a lot of times I found with a lot of players, even seasoned players, I have had to tell many seasoned players that I did lessons with because they were trying to improve their chops. I was like, man, first and foremost, you need to slow down. I'm like, you can play. You can play. You can play really good and you can play really fast. But the problem that you're having in executing the stuff you're trying to execute is you're playing too fast. You need to slow down, slow down what you're trying to do. And that way you got time to get your thoughts together. And, and once you start kind of really working this into your vocabulary, because all that stuff you're playing fast, that's just muscle memory. You can play all the stuff you already know fast. But when we start incorporating the new stuff, it's like you just started playing yesterday. Right? <laughs> so it's like. I've been there and I know other players who have seasoned have been there like, wait a minute, man, this don't even make sense. How am I? I could play all this like really fast and I'm playing this like a beginner. Yes, because each time you start something new, you are a beginner. I don't care how advanced you are. Anytime you start a new concept, you start a new idea. You are starting that idea as a beginner. And the way to improve on that idea is to take your time. Learn it. Somebody says in the chat, crawl before you walk. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Crawl, take your time. Don't get in a hurry because this is something that's going to take. It's a process. So don't cheat the process. Don't cheat the process. So if you're new to the instrument and all those things, um, and uh, like a common question I get from a lot of people uh, is like, where do I start? Like, learn the basics. Learn the basics. So, um, and, and when I say learn the basics, I don't mean don't try to play anything else. Let me make sure I'm clear with this, um, because I never want to discourage people to uh, explore. You know what I'm saying? I never want to uh, discourage people to explore and, and, and be inspired by the instrument. Like explore, try stuff. Yeah, you might not be able to play that yet, but try it. But still, there should be some part of your practice where you're going back and you're learning some of the foundational keys of things that you want to do play all you want to have all the fun you want to play like if you can't play this song but you really like it try it try it you know have fun if you spend an hour two hours just goofing off playing around on your instruments having fun that's absolutely fine all your time in the practice room doesn't have to be strict and you know mechanical and robotic because that sucks all of the joy out of playing music in doing my challenge i got uh four challenges that i've done by the way uh in these challenges i i've dealt with uh how to covering the basics and the second part and the getting like into co uh, chords and scales and then i think the third one we dealt with building solos and building riffs and lines and then the fourth one we dealt with um like learning and digging into traditional gospel so all of these challenges are available uh, the replay where you can get access to the so it was a three day live training an hour a day where I dug deep into each of these topics. And so in that, one of the things that I said, we play music. That's like the one of the first things I started with. We play music. We're not working this thing. This is this shouldn't be a job when we sit down to pick up this instrument. We're playing it. We should be enjoying it. So I never want to suck out the fun of playing this instrument because I think that's why most people get discouraged and they quit. Because once they actually start trying to learn, it's not inspiring anymore. Like, I'm having to do this. I want to get here quicker. So now you go spend a whole bunch of money on some lessons. And if this person don't make you Victor Wooten in three months, you quit. Like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, like, wait. <laughs> Vic didn't become Vic overnight. You know, he was always him. But it took, a, it took time to develop what he has that you admire. If you heard something from me today that you admire, it took time to develop that. It took frustration. It took me getting shamed a lot of times, me being embarrassed in front of people, me playing on gigs, and I didn't know songs. It's like it's a lot of process, and you want me to suck out all my process and just give you the answers. I can't do that. As much as I would love to, you know how much money I could make if I told people, look, you could sound like me in a week. I'm going to give you everything. <laughs> and then granted, I really put everything out there with all my lessons um, that I would allow somebody to play all the stuff that I play and more like above and beyond. I put it all together. And if you're interested, matter of fact, I'm going to do this. I'm going to shamelessly plug this 
uh, because why not? You know, you need to know about this. Maybe some of y'all want all of this stuff, but do understand when you get this, this, this thing right here, uh, when, when you get it, it's not going to solve all your problems. All your, all your problems are not going to instantly go away be, because, because you have, uh, access to all of this stuff. I just want to make sure that you can get access to it. But uh, I'm going to put that link in the chat as well. We're putting all kind of links in the chat. But uh, you can go and get all my stuff at one time if you want it all at one time for a one-time payment. Anyway, you can get access to everything, pretty much mostly everything I know to learn how to play all the stuff I play. But just understand you got to factor in the time. Now, I can't say how much time that is for you. That's the other thing. Everybody's time is not the same. It might take you, um, it might take you three, four, five years. Somebody else, it might take them a year. It might take somebody else six months, depending on where they are in their journey. How you practice and the intentionality that you put behind your practice. And I, I, you might think I'm joking when I said it might be like six months or something like that. I met this cat from Japan when I was in college. I don't remember his name, but I know he was a monster. And when I when I talked to him, he, he spoke English decent. I went and heard the jazz band. I was at UNA and uh, University of North Alabama. And I went to a jazz concert. It's probably like one of the only jazz concerts I went to while I was there. And I heard the jazz band play. And this cat on guitar was amazing. I'm like, the dude, he had it. I mean, the West Montgomery, all of the sweet stuff. So I saw him on campus like a little bit after the um concert and i asked him i'm like man you're amazing on guitar i'm like man you, you must have been playing since you was a kid he's like no i've only been playing six months i promise you i wanted to sell all of my gear and and go put an application at mcdonald's or something like this dude told me he had, <laughs> he told me he had been playing for six months and i wanted to quit i promise you i wanted to quit i i was like dumbfounded oh, man get out of here you ain't been playing those six months but once I started seeing the the um the culture and how they go at stuff, because I started to understand and correct me if I'm wrong, but like at that time I think it was it was communicated if you're gonna do music, something like that that's real shaky and all this kind of stuff, you better be good at it because that culture demands you to be like good at whatever it is you do, and you got to be excellent at it because I think most people want you to be doctors, lawyers tech people something that makes a lot of money so if you're going to go after this music thing especially if you're going to have the audacity to move away and go to a different country then you better be good at this like not being good is not an option like that that ain't even an option if we're going to pay money for you to go to a different country then you better prove your worth that means the the why behind it is different so that process for them is a lot shorter because their why behind that process is different. If you can, if, 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 if something happened, if you got kids or a loved one, God forbid, something were to happen to your loved one and you need to rescue them in this situation, let's say something crazy, like something, I, well, you know, I ain't gonna put nothing crazy out there, but something happens that like a freak accident and you need to see about your loved one. I don't care if, just say if they're drowning. I don't care how good or bad of a swimmer that you think you are. Immediately when that thing happens and that loved one is suffering and you need to do something about it, you're going to find some supernatural strength. You might not have ever rescued nobody before swimming, but you're going to find some supernatural strength and you're going to figure it out. And that's the thing about it. I think when it comes to music, it's so passive for people and the why for them is not strong enough. It's like, I, I got a desire to be better. But if you're in lessons with somebody and they're giving you the things to do and you're not doing those things, that means your why is not strong enough. There, it's, it's that simple. It's not strong enough. It's not important enough to you to do exactly what they say. Now, if you do exactly everything they're telling you to do down to the T and it still doesn't work, then you, you got an argument there. But if you're not putting in the work, like really putting it in, I ain't talking about spending hours and hours and hours of doing your own thing. But if you're not doing the right stuff, then you're wasting time. You're wasting time. And then you got to really check the why behind what it is you're doing. And is my why strong enough? Is anything riding on me not being good? 
like I told you guys in the video, and please go back and watch it. Uh, what was the name? I, I gotta find the name of that video because I'm, I'm gonna keep mentioning it, so I, I need to know what the name of the video is. So give me a second. Let me find the name of that video. Three tips to transform your bass playing. Go watch that video. It's it's, it's um it, it's a good one. So in that video, it's like my why for getting good, real good on bass, like over a short period of time. Like I was playing for a long time. Let's let's make this really clear. I was playing the bass for a long time and I was okay. But the time period that I got, quote unquote, really good was it was a short window. I'm gonna let that marinate for some of y'all. I had been playing bass for a while, like, you know, off and on playing. And I was I was decent. I could play. All right. But the time that I got really good, that that window was short. And the reason why is because I had a job riding on it. This is how I was feeding my family. So mediocre wasn't going to cut it. We're going to cut you. Keep coming in here sounding like you don't know what you're doing. All right, keep keep coming. Think we won't have somebody in an auditioning next week, next Sunday. All right, Jay, you can go ahead and stay at home. We're good. Nah, we're not going to do that. So, so you got to check your why. You know, I'm saying that I'm being somewhat funny and I'm not at the same time. I'm being dead serious. You have to really check your why. And once your why uh, challenges you, then you'll notice that You'll figure out stuff a lot faster. You'll figure it out a lot faster. I think I'm going to beat a dead horse on that long enough. So I'm going to leave that alone. And again, I'm going to leave with you guys. Do not cheat the process. The process is all part of the journey. And when you look back years to come over the process, there's so much value in the process. I want to share this with you. I said it in a video I put up the other day. Um, lessons. I put up a video and asked, how much is it costing you to not know what you don't know for the people who want to be a musician or, you know, you want to earn money from whatever doing this. I've earned over the years of my playing, sure, hundreds of thousands of dollars as a musician over my career span. Probably more than that. I ain't calculated all of it, but I, I know at least hundreds of thousands. We could say that that I made as a musician in my years of doing this with having a main gig we're doing sessions we're doing lessons and all these different things that i've been able to do as a result of developing my skills in music and so i run into people all the time who don't invest into to lessons because they don't feel it necessary and i get it you you, you don't i'm like to play the bass to be a little bit better on the bass i don't i don't i don't see how it's worth the investment I get it. I understand it. But do understand this. If you're going to keep going on people's lessons and, and YouTube and hitting people up in their DMs and asking them for tips and all this type of stuff, the least you could do is invest into yourself because you're trying to cheat the process. If you're not going to do it all on your own by yourself, don't keep trying to find ways to slither around and not add value to people the way that you want them to add value to you because it's an equal exchange. As a result, of um me working on this craft i've been able to do things like play sessions get a main gig that took care of my family for years and also now develop this whole website where i'm teaching bass to uh, bass players around the world uh who are who have now taken these skills and improved and i did these challenges and all these different things over the years like i've been able to do this stuff because of the skills that i went through the process and develop and so it wasn't a waste of time each lesson that i spent money on or time i spent or hours i spent in this thing has all came back to me like i i probably i know i've a hundred times my investment that i put in on this instrument the time and the i didn't have formal training in terms of formal lessons and that type of thing but i did have lessons from time to time with people and i have paid for a few lessons over the years but I know I've more than 100 times my investment into learning, into what I know, because, again, I've been able to take this stuff by way of stuff I learned online. If I was going to learn it online, I didn't bother the people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, if they were kind enough to post a video online, well, I'm going to get all I can from that video. Because if I'm going to hit them up and ask them for more after they've already given, then at least I want to be offering something to make sure I value their, their time 
and, and whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, so all these different things, you don't want to cheat the process because you're going to benefit from it. That's why you don't want to cheat it. You're going to benefit from it. If you leverage what you know, you can benefit from what you learn. I tell students all the time, if you are learning something and if you can play, then you can teach somebody something. Even if you're at a beginner level, there's somebody who's lower than you that you could teach how to get to where you are. And the more you learn, the more you teach. The more you learn, the more you teach. And it keeps going back and forth. So there's always a trade-off where you can leverage the little bit that you know. If you know a little bit more than somebody else, then you know enough to teach them. And I rest my case. All right. <laughs> Let's go back. I missed a whole bunch of stuff earlier. Um, all right. So let's let's see. Uh, there we go. So we'll start with Charles. Charles says, I try to take advantage of every tool I have available, but time spent in practice is undefeated. <laughs> I can be shown a million licks, but if I don't practice them, it doesn't matter. Absolutely right. Charles is one of my students and, you know, Charles is one of those cats that I'll say he will put in the work. Charles meets with me with my coaching sessions once a month and every month um, you can see where he's made like tons of improvement on different things. And the, 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 uh, at the same time, I think one of my other students is on here, Anthony as well. These cats, when they meet with me, each one of them are at their own place in their journey. But what I love about when I meet with them most of the time, whatever I told them to do, they've already done that most of the time and added something else to it. They didn't just wait on me to the next lesson. Most of the time, they've already added something to those uh, lessons and they've been working on music and working on songs and working, work, working really, really hard. You know what I'm saying? So I got so much respect for that. So that time you put in is everything. All right. So Chris Washington says, uh, did you have to play with an experienced musician that may have taken the fun out of playing as a beginning bass player? I play with someone that didn't coach me knowing that I was a beginner. Um, well, this might sound harsh. This might sound harsh. But that's not their responsibility. That's not their responsibility. If they do it, that's great. Sometimes, I, I will say this. Did I play with somebody that took the fun out of playing? Not necessarily, but I have been in situations that it was intense and it was stressful. Uh, it was a lot of anxiety because I knew I wasn't at the level that I needed to be at, and they pushed. They pushed me, and oftentimes a coach is not trying to be your friend, truth be told. A coach might give you something um, I, I go sometimes a little easier on my students because I understand at certain levels of playing how easy it is to quit and to give up. So in certain instances, I might go a little easy on my players, uh, on my students or, you know, whoever that I'm coaching. Uh, and I'm not going completely easy, but there are times that I might assess what they need in this moment and I might not dig in as hard because I'm like, you know what, this person needs encouragement more than anything. And so based on that, as being a coach, I kind of assess what this person or the student needs and I give accordingly. But at the same time, there are going to be coaches that you're going to come in contact with that they're not going to be nice. They're going to tell you what it is, man. You suck. You sound bad. You need to practice. And that's exactly what you need to hear. Maybe if you're in a position where you're getting um, you're getting that type of thing from people, it might be what you need right then. I'm reading this book. A good friend of mine, I have a group with a, a couple of friends of mine, pastor friends of mine. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher, but I do have pastor friends. And so they recommended this book right here, and it's called um, The Character of Leadership. And I literally just started this book. Uh, but in that first chapter, one of the things that it's talking about is, is, is like oftentimes you go into ministry with, with this, this particular pastor he was talking about. He went into ministry and his idea he was going to go in and change the world when he started his ministry he started preaching all this stuff and he's like i was going to change the world and then he got uh elevated to something else and he's like well i went in with this mindset that i was going to change this and i was going to change this and so oftentimes we go into things looking uh for what we can do in these situations and the thing that we're going to do and what we're going to add to it uh, even sometimes what people can do for us you know in these situations but oftentimes by way of this book he was saying a lot of those times God is trying to 
do something in you. Not so much about what you're going to do in this situation, but he's trying to do something in you. He's trying to use this opportunity to bring the Christ out of you. Not like pull it out and separate you, but bring those attributes of Christ. Like let them show up more in what was happening. So I'll use that to parallel a lot of times where you are in your journey. You're looking for somebody to do something for you. And maybe you're in this position to pull some out of you that you need. This is what you need. So instead of looking at it from the standpoint, and, and I'm not, um, Chris, I'm not coming down on you, but I'm just using you or using this for an opportunity to say this. Instead of looking at the situation, looking at like, man, they should be doing this or they should be doing that. No, maybe they're doing exactly what they need to do. Not to say that any growth can't happen, but what you need to take away from this moment is maybe I can dig in a little harder on myself. Maybe I've been going too easy on myself. Maybe I've been expecting somebody else to do the work. I, I looked at my life uh, when I was playing at this particular gig and I had an MD. When I became an MD uh, in that same scenario, I was able to look at that situation and, and really realize in hindsight how much I was depending on that MD. I didn't even realize it. I was depending on that MD in that situation all the time for him to feed me this and you know I was learning the songs but there were certain parts I would forget or certain things I would do like early on and I didn't realize how much I was leaning and depending on this MD to feed me the song and and I was taking the fun in essence I was taking the fun out of the situation for him because I realized that once I became an MD in that same seat like man it's hard to really enjoy and and, and play and and like be completely into the music when you're feeding somebody the entire time they might be having a good time but like if i'm spending my entire time trying to feed you the song it's gonna be hard for me to enjoy the process i don't have no problem doing it every now and again but if every time every time we play i'm feeding it to you then i feel like i'm doing your work so sometimes it might be for us to look at what we are doing and what we can be doing more of and improving you know what I'm saying? So the coach thing says, hey, you need to tighten up. You need to tighten up in this particular area, because if you're knowing this is a, a, a common thing, every time this particular situation comes up, I have a struggle here where that might be a target area for you to go home. I would work on certain things from week to week when I first uh, started playing uh, like the mega church gig that I played years ago. Like I said, I, I knew I was one of the weakest links in the band. Week to week, it would be shown to me. Based on what I suffered, or, or <laughs> I say suffered, based on how horrible my performance was, that gave me a target area from week to week what I needed to work on. Like when I got in there, I fell on my face. We played this particular song and we played it for five or 10 minutes. And I noticed my endurance was not sweet and my groove didn't feel good. I went home and I targeted groove. I'm like, all right, my groove don't, it don't feel right. So I was literally on YouTube. This is when YouTube was new trying to find something to help me improve my groove. And little by little, like, I keep in mind, I could already play, but my groove wasn't solid and it wasn't consistent. So I'm like, man, I'm, it, it, don't, it don't feel right. Like, and don't let somebody else come in on the bass and they play and it kill it. And then, like, you get back on there and it's like, eh. Like, nah, we can't have this every week. So I challenge myself based on my own observation of what I was doing. So you got to be honest with yourself to figure out where you are in order to make those necessary improvements. So don't always look at the situation for what uh, you can get out of it or what you think you're going to bring to the situation. More so look at the situation in terms of what is this thing trying to get out of me? All right. So sorry for that long, uh, <laughs> for that long response to that. Uh, uh, Drew, uh, 85, J. Rue, 85. You speaking the truth, Doc. <laughs> uh, that process makes you a better player. It took me a minute to get that, but uh, spoon feeding is not the way. It sure isn't. Uh, how can we purchase? I think when I said something in my little commercial break earlier, I gave you guys those answers. So moving on. Melvin Fogg says, how are you, bro? Happy New Year. And Melvin, happy New Year to you, man. Thank you for uh, joining in this morning or uh, this this afternoon now. Uh, George says, Rain is so true. What type of bass do you prefer to play on, whether you play indoors or outdoors? I'm pretty much consistent with my stuff. Um, I, I've probably been playing that uh, Serene and the Warrior. Those have been probably the most consistent basses for me. 
my six string, just in case y'all have never been here and seen it before. My six string serene, six string, yeah. My six string serene bass uh, is the one I play the most uh, lately. And then my five string warrior Isabella is not in here, it's in another room. But um, that's the other bass that I have played the most consistently. Uh, but now these will be getting played more and more, especially when I get the five string version. Um, so yeah, that's you know pretty much what I play. Uh, what type of fretboard? If you play indoors, outdoors, um, basic. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you what you're asking. I don't do a lot of outdoors. I guess that's the thing. I don't do a lot of outdoors gigs. Not as of um yeah it's, i was when i was traveling years ago i mean i was doing a lot of stuff where we would be doing festivals and that type of thing um but most of the time i'm pretty much indoors or in type uh in type inside of <laughs> can't talk inside of a venue or that type of thing all right so that's why i don't uh do comparisons i got you diane so riot says i'm doing the music program at B bcc Barbados Community College. Okay, cool. And it started out rough, but like you said, put in the work. Now I'm seeing. Now I'm in the second year. My last year, uh, I'm. I this. Uh, I'm missing what you're trying to say. This is important because I gotta. I gotta do Donna Lee. Okay, all right. Well, congratulations on that. Or I don't know if congratulations or good luck, <laughs> Donna Lee. I I played that a long time. Uh, don't butcher this song, Jay. You don't remember it. All right. I'm going to leave it alone. I played it on YouTube somewhere a long time ago, but now I don't remember it. All right. Praise God. <laughs> Charles says, there is no way I could look at you in the eye knowing I practiced nothing that you gave me in that lesson. Nothing works but the work. Hey, man, you need to talk to a lot of people because there are plenty of people I have gave them stuff to do. Oh, man, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to, you know, like. But this is what you're paying for. So anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, question, where where the gigs? Only church gigs, music director. You ask them, where are the gigs? I mean, there are tons of opportunities out there. But the most common, I think, consistent thing for most musicians uh, is the church. That's, you know, there are a lot of other situations out there. Unless you're playing like, um, you know, secular, like a bar, a club or you know, a, a venue that has a weekly situation, but the most consistent thing that I've seen for most musicians here in the States is a church gig. You know, that's one of the most consistent things uh, is, is a type of a church gig. Uh, Mamba says, hey, Jermaine, how do you mute the strings correctly on a six string? Um, there are a number of ways that you can do that. You can have the float. A lot of times I'm, I'm using like my floating left hand thing that I'm doing. Like I, I have the tendency to kind of float over the strings when I'm playing, you know, so like my uh, finger might like float. You know, I might have my pointing finger kind of floating over the strings and even sometimes these other fingers uh, a lot of times when I'm doing. And then sometimes you can you can do it with your right hand as well. So I would say like just it, it's it varies different people have different techniques i've seen other people do it with their right hand where they got this right hand technique that they float and do all this stuff over the strings i don't really think about all that when i'm playing truth be told so sometimes it's like um i know i'm doing a lot of the work unknowingly with my left hand where i'm kind of having this floating technique thing that's going so hopefully that answers your question but anyway guys um that pretty much wraps it up for me hopefully i've answered all these questions for everybody whoever had questions today hopefully i've gotten to your question and just to recap uh i just want to reiterate i have again two of these straps if you want your own signature strap go on the website i got two of them in stock if not you have to wait you have to wait um if you place an order you have to wait because they're handmade in brazil and so you have to give time for those to be crafted and sent over here in yeah, that sometimes could take from three weeks to a month. Uh, I've had a little more during um, severe weather or like um, when stuff was moving slow with the shipping and all that kind of stuff. And the same thing with the, the if we have the base in stock, you can get it. We still have a couple of four strings in stock. Um, 
the five string you'll probably have to wait up to about a month if you order today uh it might get there a lot sooner but i'm just saying give or take because it, like i said it is a, a somewhat custom so you have to wait you have to allow time uh for it to get to you so um yeah these are this is a custom order so if you want to order your five string today you could do that as well but anyway um also let me make mention of this we are going to be doing the active preamps as well in the five string not all of them will have active preamps but there will be an upgrade option that you can get the active preamp so if you're interested in that let me know anyway guys um for any other inquiries about coaching base coaching and that type of thing uh send me a message germaine at germainemorgan.net i'm gonna put my email address in here don't spam me please uh if you're just asking you know what i like to eat or something like that <laughs> don't just send me don't just send me a random message i i try to respond to everybody and i do answer the emails personally so that's why i said don't spam me if you're just um if you want to know a general question about a course or something that i have on my site um i'll be more than happy to try to explain whatever you guys need to know about any courses or anything that's on my site um so yeah i'll be happy to share that but if you need to get in contact with me directly jermaine at jermainemorgan.net is an easy way to reach me for booking or any of that stuff i got actually another email address but it you can still send it there uh anyway guys it's been great sharing and talking with all of you all today hopefully you enjoyed this live if so do me a huge favor and share it with somebody um that you know would benefit from this and don't cheat the process all right i gotta go uh enjoy the rest of your day i'm out peace